Good day, y'all. Today... Wait, 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 what? So much for that intro. Yeah, let me go. Good day, y'all. Okay, because you interrupted me. Yeah. I didn't even do nothing. So I had a flow. I didn't do anything. Oh, yeah. I was being a good girl. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm just letting you know no, what you need to know. Yeah, if you need to know, when you need to know, you gotta know. That's all I was doing. Are you you sleeping? I'm, I'm you frozen. You made me be quiet. I'm frozen because okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's I'm ready. Right. Let's go. 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 let us go for another edition of Pillow Talk with T and Tay. I'm T, and this is my lovely wife, Tay. Hey, y'all. And we thank you for the comments and uh, everything that you've, uh, and the calls that you've given us. We thank you, and uh, we hope that all is well. Hope this is being uh, enlightening for all the relationships out there. And here we go, into another topic. <laughs> thank you, honey for opening us up. You did so well. I just have to give you a hard time sometimes because it's just, just who I am, but I'll be a good girl. But you did great. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks for all the compliments. You're welcome. Yes. Compliments. Remember those? <laughs> <laughs> um, so today's topic, we're going to talk about one that may be a trigger to some people. So um, fair warning. Oh, I said like this today. Oh, I get the hand today. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> um, so today's topic is, um, and it's one that I dealt with and had to really figure out why I was doing what I was doing. Um, I believe he may have went through a little mm -hmm. of it as well. So let's just give you the topic and then you guys can share in the comments below how you dealt with it or why you still deal with it and how to get out of it. Um, so the topic of today's uh, talk is why do you stay in a relationship when you know you're in the wrong one? Why can't you, or why is it so hard to let go when you know you're in the wrong relationship? We'll say it that way. Why is it so hard to let go when you know you're in the wrong relationship? Um, this one I'll start off on because like I said, I've experienced this a lot uh, because I'm a people person, a people pleaser. I'll call myself that. And I have high hopes for people a lot. And I always feel like maybe they'll get better in time. Maybe, you know, if I give them opportunity, this will change. This will get better. Um, and sometimes it gets a little better, but it's never consistent. It'll be a change just to appease you type of thing versus a person actually growing and changing and becoming um, the person who they were destined to be. Um, a lot of times when you meet someone, they are who they are. They're set in their way and there's nothing, no compromise, no nothing that they're going to do to make you happy. They're focused on self and self only. Um, whatever's going to make them happy, whatever's going to please them. And it's nothing to where they are willing to work with a relationship to build it, to make it grow. Um, I stayed again, like I said, one, because I was staying hopeful. Two, because I was scared. And I was like, but if I let go of this, then <clears throat> um, I got to start over or um, I won't have A, B, C, D, where if I would have just let go, then I would have been able to be available to find what was really out there for me that was, yes, definitely. If I was able to just let go of what was wrong for me, then what was right for me would have came along if i didn't know it was right around the corner i didn't know it was a prayer away um but i was still just holding on and cleaving to the difficult relationship the abusive relationship the um not so happy relationship you know the different ones that they didn't truly love me back like i poured out and poured in and gave all the love i could give into the situation and it was never reciprocated back to me and it made it so challenging because you wanted that person to love you so much, um, but they didn't love you the way you loved them. They loved you, but just not the way you loved them, not as hard as you loved them. Um, so you dealt with, I dealt with a lot of um, fear, fear, like I said, of starting over or letting go or giving up the, the norm or something I was comfortable with. 
I guess I can say that something that was comfortable comfortable to me. And um, like I said, staying hopeful. The other part of it was just being stubborn. Like I had people telling me on this side, on this side, you know, hey, this situation isn't good for you. I see you becoming more and more sad. I see you not being yourself and you being less and less of the bubbly person you are. I see you being torn down um, in the process of this relationship that you're in. I don't think it's a good fit for you. I don't think you should stay in me being myself. Why you worry about my business? I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Let me figure it out. Da, 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 da. And I, honestly, I had to get to a point where I was tired and enough was enough in order to let go. I had to get to a point where I value myself enough to say, I'm worth more than this. I deserve more than this. I deserve to be loved. I deserve to be not cheated on. I deserve not, I deserve not to be abused. I deserve not to be um, taken advantage of. I'm deserving of that. So when I got to that point of realizing what my worth was, what I was deserving of, then I, I was able to start letting go of the wrong relationships. That was in dating, marriage, friendships, what have you, I had to get to a point where I had to know that they're using me or they're, no, they're not really in love with me. They don't really care about me. I had to get to that point where I truly saw what was going on. I had to take the blinders off. I had to take that love blinder off because, man, that thing there, when they've got a piece of your heart, it's hard to see the person for who they really are. So I had to take those blinders off and really see the situation for itself in its entirety in order to let go. Sorry, I got a little windy with it, but that was kind of like my backstory with it. And I, I've been there. I say, I'll say it that way. I've been there and I know the challenges behind why, but I also know what it takes to come about of it. So, any thoughts on that one, Ben? No, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, that's a lot of what the reasoning is for waiting and, take, and taking too long to come out of something. Um, and, you know. Yeah. So, have, have, have you been, you've been in a relationship where you stuck around longer than you wanted to, right? Oh, sure. So, sure. What, why, what made you, like, stick uh, around? And that's what I'm going to get into. Is, oh, okay. Um, the other factor that you, you mentioned, that hoping people will get better, but also... Uh, when you have children uh, mm -hmm. between individuals, uh, it, it makes it more challenging to leave because that's Johnny's mama or that's Sally's father. And uh, it's just hard to walk away from that and uh, hard to dismiss and, and dissolve the relationship because of those uh, those um, kind of situations. And also, if they've been just around the person a long time. They may not, not, not necessarily had the child, mm -hmm. but because they've been around all the time. Right. And it was uh, hard to maybe dissolve the relation because that person wasn't the right fit for you. Mm -hmm. And you guys weren't together, but the children loved the individual. Or the children get used to them and, and get familiar with them. And uh, that's the other reason why I know that people stay in uh, relationships and, and what have you a little too long. Um, and it makes it more challenging because of children a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, to piggyback off of that, um, in regards to the children that may be involved in the relationship that you're in, um, I had to be, it had to be brought to my attention by my adult children how some of the situations caused, it was, it was toxic for them. And the effects on me staying, how it hurt them or how it affected them as they became adults and as they became older. So we have to pay attention to the fact that what we're wanting to stay in and be a part of because we're afraid to let go, what effect it's having on our children yeah. that may be in the mix of the relationship. Um, what effect is it having on us as a person, like with our guards up? Because when I first met my husband, um, I was at a point where, like I said, I did not trust people. I didn't trust men. I was like, he's going to be just like the rest of them. I don't want any parts of it. I'm good, you know, but I had to not allow myself to be so torn down and so broken 
about the past relationship that I would have missed the opportunity that could have been built with us and the opportunity that has been built with us. Um, I, I was grateful that I didn't allow my past to dictate what my future would be when it came to my relationship. But it can have a lasting effect on you if you stay in the situation too longer than you're supposed to be in it. Longer when the season is up, mm. it's it's time. It's time to really make pay attention to the signs. The signs are there for a reason. They're not for us to omit them and dismiss them. Yes, I know. Okay, they're in my heart. I love them, and I get that. But sometimes <clears throat> love can hurt. And you've got to be able to make a, a tough decision when it comes to your health. And I'm not just talking about your physical, your mental, emotional, and spiritual health. When that's becoming, and when that's like being attacked, you've got to know what it, what you need to do to fix that, to adjust that, to make it better, to get back healthy again. Um, but you got to, you got to be at a point where you're ready to do that because when you go back and forth, I've done that too. Um, that's just toxicity in itself and you're teaching your children um, and those that are watching you that that's how relationships are supposed to be it's supposed to be like that I'm supposed to go back and forth with a person I'm supposed to break up get back together break up get back together I'm not saying I'll give someone an opportunity if they mess up to try to fix and mend the relationship because there are some things that are mendable but I what I'm saying is let's not do this back and forth for 10 10 times over the next 15 years let and, and realizing okay when enough's enough. Let's not, I'm not saying either to you that it's okay to sit and argue every single day. I've been in a relationship where I woke up arguing, I went to bed arguing, and it is draining, draining on your spirit, draining on your emotion, draining on your health. It is unhealthy to be in a relationship where you are going back and forth with a person, having to argue, having to fuss, having to fight. That's not love. It's not. And you gotta realize where, what, what love is, and how to how you are supposed to be loved you gotta love yourself first once you start loving yourself first then you know how someone else someone else is supposed to love you back so i'm so, um, sorry i mean to go further in but i had to think about it when it comes to the children how they're affected in that because it was brought to my attention how it was how they were affected by the relationships that we were in exactly, exactly. so anything else from that I know I'm long-winded. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, like, sorry, we, y'all. We could go on and on. I mean, there's several points of uh, reasoning. You know, some could be finances. Some could be mm -hmm. one is working and one is not working. And, you know, there's so many different ones. And so that's the reason is why people, why you stay in them longer. And they're hard to come away from. Yeah. And I don't know, Tay, do you have a solution for that? I, I wouldn't say a solution because everybody's story is different. Everybody's situation is different on why they are where they are, why they stay where they are. Um, but I can say definitely figure out who you are. Yeah. Understanding who you are. Um, I think I have a Monday motivation that come, that um, that's coming out. Uh, that No, that was out this past Monday. And it talks about knowing your worth, knowing your value, and what you allow, how you allow people to treat you. And if you allow some, the people are going to treat you the way they allow, you allow them to treat you. And if you continue to just sit and take and take what they're giving, they're going to keep giving it because they know, oh, she's going to let me, he's going to let me, they're going to let me. So I'm going to keep doing them this way. They haven't told me they want me to love them any differently. They haven't shown me that they want me to be better to them. So I'm going to treat them how they allow me to treat them. you got to be at that point where you put your foot down and say, no. That's not how I want to be treated. That's not how I want to be loved. And once you get to that point and you're there, then you can start to see and pay attention to what circle you're in, that circle of relationships you're in, which ones are good for you, which ones are unhealthy and what you need to let go of. I mean, it's not a, fix, a microwave fix, fixing type of thing. It's a, it's a process. You've got to fix you first. And once you can fix you, then you can start to fix the things around you and knowing what needs to be removed and what can stay. Who can go along with you on the journey and who can't. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my idea, my point yeah. in it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I don't know, that's all I got on that. Would you have anything else to say? I mean, the only thing I'd say is, you know, as my wife said, when you get tired of things and you go, and it doesn't have to be necessarily wait until you get tired. Right. Sometimes you have to look 
at things, it's like looking at TV. You look at a t- a television, and sometimes you see different stories, and you may see yourself in that story, you know, different movies, different shows, and you're like, hey, that looks like they're having a movie about me. Yes. About my situation, about my story. And do you want that same storyline to keep playing, mm-hmm. or do you want to change the script? And so that's when you have to, you know, make different choices, and uh, that's what I say. Um, everyone knows, as you say, stated, for themselves, what they're in and how uh, their life, how what you want your life to be. You know, it's kind of like the projectile of what you want your life to be when you're dealing with finances. Mm-hmm. You know, you're saying, okay, five, our careers rather, you're dealing with either five, 10, 15, where do you see yourself? They always ask you that. Okay, yeah. same thing in relationships. You know, where do you see yourself? What kind of relationship did you do you want? And that's what you should be basing your life on. And if your life can, uh, intertwine with someone else's life and be and then you're on the right path if they're intertwining together and you're both on the same uh slate going up you got something yeah and that's when you realize hey i better keep this and i better either marry it or you know <laughs> be a serious commitment to it yes. you know uh, but that's my solution yeah. suggestion okay so breaking the cycle breaking that uh uh just breaking the cycle of of the Staying in something staying longer in. than you need to. Yes. <laughs> yes. Breaking the cycle. Like, we've yeah. got so many things in our lives that we continue to allow to be a cycle in our lives. So we've got to get to the point where we decide enough's enough. We're going to keep this cycle going for years and years. And our children do it and our grandchildren do it. So it's like, let's just break that cycle now so they can see healthy, yes. see happy. Yes. And that way they know what healthy and happy relationships look like. Yes. Because it takes a lot of energy to be going back and forth in, yes. as far as anger and any mm-hmm. type of hostilities and disagreements. It takes a lot of energy out of you. And uh, believe it or not, it takes it's draining the whole household. It, mm-hmm. it can be even draining at your job once you go to the job, you know, because you just, it, it's taking so much effort to try to get along with one another. And that's why sometimes you have to bring in therapy. Sometimes you yeah. have to bring in, uh, as far as joint therapy, that way you can get on the right path together. And, understand what the flaws are and you can work on those and then also understand the uh the uh fl- the ones that are not flaws you know and keep building on the good stuff so. yeah now we are saying that you are gonna have a disagreement you are gonna no, you know combat that. with your mate or whatever but I, what, what we are saying is it shouldn't be something that you do every single day right when you wake up you go to bed that's all you're doing yeah. Um, every single time you look up, you're walking on eggshells because you're afraid to say something because you know it'll turn into an argument or a dispute or a fight word, yeah. fighting words or maybe physical. Yeah. You, that's what we're talking about. It's like knowing how to, to know when um, they're not treating you like you should be treated, like you want to be treated. Even when you try talking to them about it and they, like I say, they do that little shift for just a little bit just to appease you. And there's no consistency in it. They're not truly caring about how you feel and how you want to be loved, so they're not making any adjustments. Now, if you if it's you that have to make adjustments, then you both make adjustments together. Be open to making adjustments together, but knowing um, what's worth fighting for and what's worth letting go. But that's all I got. That's all I have as well. Okay. I mean, tell you, that's it. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say, yo. In a nutshell. Cook all of me that. All right. That's all we have today. Thank you guys so much for joining us with Pillow Talk with TNTA. He just be trying to get me in under my skin with that. Um, we will. <laughs> I know it says that. <laughs> but that's, it feels weird when you call me that. Anywho. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you join us next week on Pillow Talk with TNTA. It has been great. Um <clears throat> It has. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, also, plug this in here for you guys. If you haven't noticed in the description box below, my um, website is listed for the Relationship Coach business. Um, so if you are in need of a relationship coach or someone that can help you um, deal with whatever relationships in life that you have going on, whether it's a dating, whether it's parenting, whether it's trying to find out how to date or work-life balance or uh, time management, whatever it is that you may be dealing with, um, definitely check us out. Not gonna go far into that. The website's below. Check it out and let us know if you need any help. All right, that's all I got. That's all I got. All right. Thanks, y'all. Have a good one.
Bye. See ya. You didn't do the mic check. We, I, we do the mic check. I thought you was wanting to see how loud I was speaking too. I did. I checked your mic. Okay. Will check again? No. I'm going to check anyway. Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check, mic Is check. Is that the voice you're going to talk to? Yes, it's the voice. I'm always talking at this level. I know that. Hater. I always talk at this level. Stop being mean. Yeah. I won't move anymore. I want you to move more. I need to plug in. I thought you liked me. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Just check it. Not me on my square now, though. Is it broken into squares? They're rectangles. They're not squares. I'm off my square where I've been sitting there. Is that what that means? For me, for my interpretation of what I was saying. Mm -hmm.